The proxy design pattern is a structural design pattern that involves controlling access to an object. So we're going to have a proxy object that is going to wrap some other object. And this client is going to have to go through the proxy object in order to access the real object. So that being said, what exactly is the point of this proxy object? Well, we can implement additional functionality such as logging, maybe lazy loading, caching, or some kind of access permissions without having to change the real object. So structurally, the proxy pattern is very similar to the decorator pattern. The only real difference is the intent. So with the decorator pattern, we're usually wrapping an object in order to perform additional business logic, whereas the proxy is more focused on optimizations, I would say, analytical behavior, and overall just controlling access to an object, as we will see in this demo. So for this demo, just a console application, take a look at the main. So we come in here, this is all kind of dirty, so I'll close this up after we go through here, but just a menu that we show, and if we press one, then we will view blog posts, and that is simply this method right here, Let's see this in action real quick. So press one and we instantiate a blog post service. We'll take a look at that in just a second. And then we get all of our blog posts and also getting all the blog posts takes, I think a second, I have it hard coded as, and then we simply print those to the console. So if we take a deeper look at this, we have our blog post service implements the I blog post service interface. All we do is delay for one second and then return just a bunch of hard coded blog posts. And then these are the blog posts that we eventually print to the console. So right now in my program.cs, which is essentially my client, I just directly instantiate a blog post service and we get all the blog posts. But instead, I want my client to go through some kind of proxy object so that I can implement additional functionality. And in this case, I want to write some messages to the console before and after I get my blog posts. So realistically, we could just do this directly in the blog post service, just have some console write lines, but you know what? What if I'm not in a console application? Then I wouldn't want console write lines here. So instead, we're gonna wrap our blog post service in a proxy so we don't litter the blog post service with a bunch of console write lines. So over in my services folder, let's create a new class over here. We'll call this one the console logging blog post service. And we need to implement our I blog post service interface. And of course the interface is important here so that we can swap whatever I blog post service we use between different proxies or even the real blog post service. But anyways, for the console logging blog post service, we first are gonna need some kind of I blog post service in here so that we can forward request to it. So we'll just call that the blog post service and get that through the constructor. And now implementing our get all method is pretty straightforward. So we just want logging here with a console write line. So we'll first say getting all blog posts and then we'll actually do that. So let's get an I enumerable of blog posts and delegate that to our blog post service that we wrap, just get all. This method will have to be async. And now that we're done that, let's write another message. We'll say successfully retrieved all blog posts. And then at the end of this method, we'll just return our blog posts. So pretty simple implementation here. We have our console logging blog post service, which is our proxy object. And we forward all of our requests eventually to a real blog post service. And we implemented our additional functionality. So in this case, just console write lines. And we didn't have to litter our original blog post service. So if we don't want the logging, then we don't go through the proxy, but in this case we do. So let's instantiate a console logging blog post service here, and we need to pass in a blog post service, which is gonna be our real blog post service. So again, very similar structure to the decorator pattern, just different intent. So let's go ahead and run this, and we should see our logs. Let's press one. So there we go, getting all blog posts, and then we successfully retrieved all of them, and then we print them to the console. So a proxy that does logging is probably the simplest implementation of the proxy pattern. Let's try something a little bit more advanced. So let's create a new class over here. And this time we're gonna do caching slash lazy loading. So much more advanced, but a common optimization. We'll call this the caching blog post service. I suppose you could also put proxy at the end of your class name if you wish, but we'll keep it simple for now. Might be helpful to have the pattern name in the class name, but let's implement our I blog post service interface, make our method async. And again, gonna be forwarding requests to a real blog post service. So we're gonna have to get that in a field up here and I blog post service and get that passed through the constructor. So a couple different ways that we could implement caching functionality here. We could just have a list field up here 
that we initialize as null. And if the list is null, then we'll load the blog post from our real blog post service and then populate the list and return the list. But if the list is not null, then we'll just return the list because it's already been loaded. But in this case, I think I'm gonna actually use system.lazy because I'm thinking it's gonna be easier to implement. Let's see. So we're gonna have a lazy up here. We can actually make it read only. And this is gonna be a lazy for a task that will return an I enumerable of blog posts. And we'll call this the get all lazy. So I have another video where I go deeper into system.lazy, but it's basically just a class that supports lazy loading some kind of value. So in this case, we're going to lazy load our blog posts and the lazy is effectively going to act as a cache. So let's initialize this lazy, the get all lazy. So a new lazy, and we need to pass in a value factory to our lazy. So the value factory is just going to be a function that's going to create our task that's going to load our list of blog posts. So in this case, we have that, that's gonna be from our blog post service, and that'll just be the get all method because that is a function, and this function returns a task that results in a list of blog posts. So perfect, that definitely turned out easier than populating some kind of list up here. So now all we have to do in our get all method is return the result of awaiting the value that we passed into our get all lazy. So the first time we call value, we're gonna get back a task, which we get from this get all method. And this task is of course going to load all our blog posts and then we're going to await that task. So actually load all of the blog posts and get a result, return that from this method. And our lazy is gonna hold onto that task that has the loaded blog posts so that we can return them in subsequent method calls. So overall, we're really just going to execute this load method once and I'll put a breakpoint here just to prove this. But now in the program.cs, let's wrap our console logging proxy with a caching blog post service and we can pass in our proxy blog post service which is a proxy to our actual blog post service. So now we're really starting to see how this resembles the decorator pattern, but let's go ahead and run this. So I will view blog posts. We're gonna load them for the first time. Here we go, we hit our breakpoint, let's continue. There we go, here's our blog post printed. And let's go ahead and view blog posts again. And looks like we hit the delay again. I must have messed this up somewhere. Oh, so obviously the issue is that I'm instantiating a new blog post service every single time which means we're instantiating a new lazy every single time. So this will definitely not work. Let's move our blog post service out of this method and put it at the top of our main so that we can reuse it across all calls to view blog posts. So we'll just pass it in here, add a parameter to view blog posts and all good now. So let me reinsert this breakpoint and I promise this time we will only hit it once. So let's view blog posts. There we go. We're gonna load the blog posts and they're gonna be cached in our lazy. Let's continue and try to view them again. And there, oh, I removed the breakpoint. Let me try this again. Okay, so view the blog post and there we go. We did not hit the breakpoint and we are viewing them. So the cache is indeed working. There we go, we hit our lazy, but our lazy has already been initialized. So we're just gonna return the loaded blog post. So just to summarize, we have our real object, the blog post service, and then we created some proxies. So we have the console logging blog post service, which is a proxy to a real blog post service. And in this proxy, we implement additional functionality, in this case, just logging. So we didn't have to clutter our existing real blog post service with that functionality. And same goes for the caching blog post service. We have our lazy, which acts as a cache, and we didn't have to couple this functionality to the real blog post service. So again, very similar to the decorator pattern and the fact that we're wrapping an object to perform additional functionality, same concept of composition over inheritance, just different intent in this case. So I definitely recommend the proxy pattern for extending your application. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.